Hi, how you doing? <laughs> I always make me laugh. <laughs> uh, beautiful morning over here in the Gambia. I had another video kind of prepared and I was gonna drop that, but because we got questions about specific details in preparation for coming to the Gambia, we decided to drop that right now. So this is what we're doing. Alright, so the first steps is understanding who you are, knowing who you are. Me, I'm a fast mover, so that means I plan fast. And basically, when I feel 51% on something, I'm going to move on it. So you might be an extreme planner where everything has to be, I'm talking about, 100% exact, all the way detailed down, right? And you may need time. So you got to know that. If you don't know that, then you'll be listening to everybody and taking information from everybody and it, it won't fit you. So that's first. Uh, what's next? Um, research. Yeah. Doing research before you come. Uh, I feel like looking at YouTube videos, documentary yeah. websites, the Gambian website, it has a lot of great information on there um, and pictures and things like yeah. the language, the culture, yeah. uh, and things like that. Because if you study that, you'll feel closer, you'll be able to adjust a little better just by knowing some, a little, you know, some things. Yeah. And also, um, it'll help you to understand like the weather, yeah. all that type of stuff, because it's subtropical. So you have to make the decision if you got like allergies and all that yeah. type of stuff, yeah. if it if it'll affect you. If you if you love nature and like to be outside, this is definitely the place for you. Yeah. Um, after you've done the research, you you will kind of start throwing a bug in your family members here, like whoever. Yeah whoever you're getting yeah. to come with you. Mentally preparing them, knowing um, what you need when you come into the country, like yes. for customs and things like that. Yeah. So, cause different nationalities need different things. Yeah. So Americans definitely need a visa. Yep. Uh, Europeans don't, so. <laughs> we'll talk about why, in, maybe in another video, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah. So that's preparation. Yeah. Um, uh, doing the research, that's research. Yeah. So we kind of messing up a little bit, but this is kind of off the cuff. So the next step after you've done the research and you've decided whether you want this to be a trip or whether you want it to be a move, you can decide on how you want to, uh, like I say, how you want to ship things. Either you're going to ship via uh, what is it? Like, Containers, yeah, or, yeah. Uh, pallets. Or are you just gonna try to pack everything? Are you gonna pack like, like us? us. Well, that's what we did. We packed. We packed. We sold, and we packed. And um, and that's major because the fluctuation, the the price difference, is yeah pretty astronomical. I'm gonna yeah. tell you that right now. If you feel secure with that, you know, yeah, because uh, with those with the shipping. You have it has to go through customs and custom has this has to decide if they want to let your stuff in yeah. so but so the key thing would be to if you know somebody here good morning, good morning. Are you all right? good yeah. morning. Yeah. everything's beautiful you look good you look good yeah yeah thank you <laughs> all right thank you <laughs> yeah people people here love to talk to so you and nice. stop here and talk so nice. But yeah, so it's, it's if you feel secure, you know, and, and you know, cause you could have some really important stuff. So it'd probably be best to, you know, get somebody who's here, who knows, who can kind of facilitate all of that for yeah, you. Yeah, we have Shakina. Yeah. We have Shakina, that's our guardian angel. You 
know, she's been she's been blessing us. Yes. You know, holding our hand every step of the way. Every step of the and way. And I'll have no problem saying that. No. No. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, if you get it shipped over in a container or something, just understand that you got to pay two prices. Yeah. You got to pay shipping from America, then you got to pay shipping over here. Yeah. Next steps, I would say you can't say any one of them is the main step. No. But uh, well, you have to a get very a, yeah. a very important step is getting the passport and visa. Yeah, because if you're like us, we never travel out of the country before, so we had to get our passports first. Yeah. And you know, it was of course during like right after uh, COVID was kind of like letting up a little bit, and they started letting you go out. Right. And we. Evidently, it never let up. They just right. decided that people should live life a little bit. Right. So we needed to get our passports. So we we decided to. So we had to go and uh, make an appointment for the post office. We had to make an appointment online for the post office. Yep. And you have to bring like all your documents. You have to bring your social security card and your uh, birth certificate. Yeah. With you. Um, fill out an application. You have to fill out the passport application and everything for each family member. And we went and did the whole process and they took they take your original birth certificate to mail off with the application the passport application it's okay <laughs> it's wide enough <laughs> they told us that it would be what like six months before we got them back yeah and we got it them was in like an astronomical weeks. amount of time so we were like really fearful like we because we, we were ready to go yeah you know so we were hoping that it would get back sooner than that it got and back it in three did. weeks okay in three weeks even the monica gonna keep going <laughs> people even the passport people were surprised about how fast yeah we got everything back yeah but it was three weeks yeah and of course, we were happy. I knew it wasn't going to take that long. Um, there's just something that they have to say. It's kind of like a doctor telling you you can't do something uh, because other it, it's, it's happened to other people. So, yeah. yeah. So, so, three weeks. Then we got our passport. So, then we had to send in for the visa. For the visa. We were able to send in for our visas. So, yeah. if you go, um, we're going to put all of these links on there, too. Yeah. So, you go to the uh, Embassy of Gambia. DC yeah. and dot org and you fill out the application for whatever national because they have like for different like for Europe they have one and then for um, Americans they have one so yeah. you fill that out for the embassy and um, you send it in you send it Post in with it. your passport Post you it. also send in they want you to send in of course it costs it costs more everything to costs to it. get to go to go somewhere they're just yeah. point blank period so it was two hundred dollars it used to be a hundred but now it's two hundred yeah and we were willing to pay that like i said for convenience and security so all right hold it hold it so understand that you don't have to pay for your visa here no you can go to the you can come to the gambia and get it for 60 bucks you know and like she said it's we got it so that we wouldn't have to go through it because thinking about tra like traveling and you've never done that traveling internationally you know we want to you know be as secure as we can and yeah. knowing that we have it already and you got to keep in mind once you get here uh the airport is so small and it's hot so it's like the less time you spend in this airport it's uh -huh. the, the better honestly so because you just want to get your stuff and go yeah. and, and start enjoying yourself so right you know that's that's all that it is <laughs> got some dogs right here uh, uh, but yeah so uh 60 in gambia if you get it when you're in gambia or 200 if you get it in america but you know that you have it <laughs> yeah so they have you uh send return postage with uh your visa application and your passport so that they can send your stuff back to you yeah and we recommend sending priority. uh probably probably three yeah and probably send three priority. because if they mess up on your on your name or any on any of your information you want to send that back in and get it taken care of and they're gonna you don't get charged any extra and they just send it right back out to you yeah because Roderick, 
he his name was actually spelled wrong when we first got his visa back. Yep. So we had to resend it. And they also are available through, through email. So if you have That's any That's the best questions, way to contact them. Yeah. Yes, if you have any questions for them, you can email them um, for, for Americans. You can email them at the Embassy of Gambia um, slash DC.org. And like I said, we're going to put the link on there and everything. Yeah, and you'll be surprised how quick they get they back respond. to you. They <laughs> respond, yes. Yeah, they, they respond for yeah. sure. And they apologize and everything. It yeah. was easy. So what's next? Okay. So we were just trying to decide which should go first, but between the COVID test and the booking, mm -hmm. and 100% it's the booking booking of your flights. And I booked twice. And the first one got canceled because we was going to basically jump flights. And it, it the price turned out to be around like 1600 or something. We had it going from Las Vegas to Newark, Newark to DC, DC to Lisbon, to Portugal, and then uh, Lisbon to Barcelona, then Barcelona to Banjul. And yeah, so that's a lot. Yes, with days layover in between. Yeah, like a day layover, <laughs> um, which still was good because we traveling, get the kids get to see, you know, different things. Yeah. That's what we, that's what it was about. Yeah. Um, and, of course, better price. <laughs> so, um, the flight got canceled from Barcelona to Banjul because they were canceling everything to Banjul. Yeah. So, uh, one airline. Yeah, so it was only one airline. So, I had to book everything over. And the price went from 1600 around 1600 which I'm going to show y'all, to around like 2900 Yeah. So... Brussels airline was the only one. Yeah, so we took, for us, domestic, we took Spirit to Newark, Newark to Brussels, then Brussels to Banjul. And like I said, it came out to about 2,900 for the tickets, but I'm gonna put it up. And, but we had to pay for baggage. And I'm just gonna post what we paid in baggage and everything so yeah. I don't, we don't have to go over the numbers yeah we did everything ourselves we didn't go through an agent or anything nah nah get the experience ourselves yeah. so we can understand and yeah. know how to maneuver through everything yeah so but, we can help other people if we have to yeah and he actually went to different sites to look at the times and things yeah. and yeah. then went back to like the airline yeah uh, site i use a website called skip lag Skip lag, uh, help you get better prices by jumping flights. Yeah. You know, so that's basically it. You know, you wanna, the main thing with the flights is your baggage. Now, what I'm understanding, from what I'm understanding, you can bring as much luggage as you want, uh, but it's gonna cost. Yeah. It is gonna cost. Um, weight, the weight of it. So if you keep everything under 50 pounds, you're basically checking in for free. You're basically yeah. checking in for free. Yeah. Maybe not domestically, but uh, internationally, like with United, you if, if if all our bags were under 50, 50 pounds, we wouldn't, have, to we wouldn't have had to pay. We wouldn't have to pay anything really, mm -hmm. because we had two bags that was 50, uh, two bags that was 50 to 70 pounds. That's 200 a piece, so that's 400. Then we had two bags that was 70 and above, and that's what 400. Yeah, a piece. So that's 800, which brought us to the total of 1,200. Yeah. So those, some of the things that y'all wanna, you know, if you got extra bags, yeah, pack it in. Yeah, like 50. Well, yes, and that's what I would say probably that we would do differently is buy more bigger, uh, more um, large luggage and just make sure it's 50. Yeah. And every one. Yeah, yep. Instead of trying to stuff everything into one, in a certain amount of luggage. Exactly. It's beautiful okay. out here, y'all. It's so beautiful. It is beautiful, I swear. Yeah. But yeah, so the next step is because now you 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 you, you pay for your ticket. You pay for your ticket. So now it's the test. And with the test, you want to get the rapid PCR test, which should give you your results in 48 hours. But you want to do it pretty close because it needs to be 72 hours before departure. And that's, before you leave, it needs to be in that window of 72 hours or they won't accept it. Yeah. And uh, 
That's just simple as that. And all you need is just the rapid PCR. You don't the the forty eight hour one. Stuff. You don't need because they'll tell you that uh, the some of the testing centers will tell you, oh, you need one for international, right. or they do a concierge service for extra. Don't yeah. pay the extra because they're not looking for anything special. So right. you, all you need is just that paperwork with your name, the time and date, yeah. and negative. if you're negative. That's Simple all they want to see. They're not looking for anything extra. Simple and they're not that. looking if it's like pretty looking or anything. Right, right. They do not care. Right. So don't fall for it. Right. Alright, so this is what we're gonna throw in. This is this is pretty extra. So the extra is paying for converters, uh, inverters, power banks, um, what else? Uh, lights. Lights. Like small lights. Your pillows, yeah, your favorite pillows that's, that's that make you comfortable. Comfortable, yes. Um, a blanket, maybe blanket. a favorite blanket yeah. that you have. Because any of those things will help ease yeah. Ease you and make you comfortable yeah. when you're traveling. Yeah. And over here, so far, we've been good. We had a power outage and we had lights. Yeah. You know, I, I got my film lights, so we had lights. Yeah. And uh, my, my daughter keep her pillow. Yes. My son keep his what? What do you got? He has his pillow and his blanket. Yeah. So, so something that make you comfortable. Yes. Monica got her little sweater thing yeah, and all that. My, so. You know, and yeah. You still will, I brought my sweaters and I found that I, you know, like a little uh, a cami or whatever, because it gets chilly in the room, depending on where you are. Yeah, yeah. And if you're like a, a easily, a person that gets easily cold, yeah. like even on the beach, the breeze, you know, you may want to have like a little jacket on your arm yeah. or something. So. Don't, and, and two, this is what I'm saying. <laughs> you don't have to, you, you, you listen to these YouTube videos, um, you know about the weather and stuff but monica wears pants yeah that's one I, of the things i have jogging pants yeah. because the key is bring what's comfortable for you yep. what you usually wear don't if you don't wear bikinis and shorts don't you, you know, gotta don't do come it. here with all your luggage is that and you're trying to force yourself to yeah, wear yeah. something because nobody cares nobody's looking at what you're wearing nobody's judging you for what you're wearing right so wear what you want to wear wear what you're comfortable in yeah yeah be yourself when you come here because they are just excited that you are here yeah so they don't yeah, care and it's, and it's not it's not even about the people caring i'm saying yeah. it's more about listening to people saying how hot it is and all that right. type of stuff you know you got to come with what you're comfortable in and then you'll figure it out once you, once get, you here get here because we wearing our regular stuff that mm -hmm. we wear regularly so mm -hmm. you know and that's what it's about Dang. you have to be comfortable talk with your family whoever coming with you prepare you yourselves mentally mm -hmm. because it is different but the transition you know everybody like it's a huge culture shock and it's like for us it's, it's certain things that would be considered a culture shock but it's it really doesn't bother us because we adaptable and we move around a lot you know we, we used to move around a lot mm -hmm. so this is you know this is it's home for real yeah you know what i'm saying certain things we got to get used to the markets and all that type yeah. of stuff but other than that beautiful you know so that's pretty much it man yeah. i think we did a good job i think so too i hope y'all got enough information yeah uh you, and and anything else ask us and we will try to answer it yeah yeah for sure to the for best sure. of our knowledge <laughs> yeah yeah for sure so so that's it man please like and subscribe we love you guys thank you so much thank y'all all right Bye. later